Hey everyone, it's Haley here, also known as Gabrielle for the people on Facebook. So in my previous mess, um, videos, I had mentioned a paper I wrote on healing through the ages. So today, I'm going to be starting uh, a little series on that. So the first place we're going to start is the Book of Acts. So that's what we'll be talking about today. And as you guys probably know, there's so many really amazing healings talked about in the Book of Acts. So today we're going to start with that. And I will be reading out of the paper that I wrote. So sorry if I'm looking down quite a bit, but that's what I'm doing. I'm reading the paper. So we're going to see, yeah, first of all, we know that Luke wrote the book of Acts. So we're going to see if he has any pattern indicating how God acts. Luke, we're saying, okay. So we see here in the book of Acts what we're, what is called power evangelism. And we start in chapter one, and he begins by telling us that this is a companion volume to his gospel, the gospel of Luke. So in the gospel of Luke, he dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach is what he specifies and the emphasis seems to be that Luke now continues the story of Jesus's doings and teachings through his disciples whom he empowered by the Holy Spirit it says then Jesus ascended to heaven leaving the disciples with the promise of his return Luke begins this book of the Bible by seeming to contrast the empowered group before Pentecost with the empowered group after Pentecost. First off, we'll talk about Stephen, the first martyr. We can find his account in Acts chapters 6 and 7. You can turn there if you'd like, and we'll start off in verse 1 of chapter 6. It reads, Now in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Here I want to pause and point out that these seven men who were chosen to wait tables were normal Christian men. These men did not get to be with Jesus personally during his ministry, as the apostles had. We'll continue in verse 5. So that's a big point before I continue. Um, <laughs> that's a big point because a lot of times I'll hear the argument of, oh, um, the only ones that had power, the only ones that could heal, those were the people that were physically with Jesus. And here we see that that is not the case. These seven men uh, were, uh, in fact, waiting tables before uh, this, what they were chosen to do. Okay, so verse 5. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parnamus, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Okay, so here we see laying hands mentioned. Um, so that's another thing to note. It says, verse 7, Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and many of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power. So Stephen was full of faith and power. Okay, two different things, but they work really well together, faith and power. <laughs> it says, Stephen, full of faith, of faith and power did great wonders and signs among the people. I want to pause here again. Notice the language. Stephen, a layman who waited tables in the church and cared for the poor, was full of faith and power. So we see that Stephen was very humble because he was a waiter and he was caring for the poor. So we see humility is a great thing to have. We know that, but it really works very well with the faith and power. Those three things all work very well together. It says he was full of faith and power and did great wonders and signs among the people. 
so as to bring many individuals to salvation through Christ. Okay, pause again. So we see that he would do great signs and wonders to bring people to Christ. Hence the power of evangelism. So these things are still going on today. I myself um, have been doing this several years. And uh, like I said in previous videos, have seen hundreds of people healed. And then therefore that brought them to salvation in Christ. So once you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can and should be doing these things. Okay, and then it says, okay, yeah, sorry, lost my place. This ties in nicely with what Paul says in his letter to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 4.20. This is one of my favorite verses, by the way. It says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Okay. We see so many miracles done at the hands of Jesus' followers by the power of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. But for time's sake, we'll focus on a couple more. I do want to note the fact that each time an individual stepped out in a gift of the Holy Spirit, many people got saved. We can look at passages like the lame man who was healed in Acts 3-7. So, um, another thing to note, like... A gift of the Holy Spirit is also like a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The different things listed that the Holy Spirit can do, like prophesy, uh, miracles, healings, uh, tongues, different things. We, we, those are like manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So now we'll go to Acts 3, 7. It says, or I'm sorry, no, just Acts chapter 3 in general. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him with John, and Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Okay, I'll pause there for a second. When I recount this story to people, I usually like to say that perhaps the man was too slow and wasn't listening to him when he said rise up and walk. So that's why he felt the need to grab him by the hand and raise him up. So I always think that's interesting. So he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. After the healing, we see that Peter preaches to the people the salvation message in how Jesus had been raised from the dead in chapter 4, verse 4 reads as follows. However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. Okay, so after this miracle that was just performed, then Peter preached the gospel, and like 5,000 men came to believe on Jesus and accept him as Lord and Savior and become disciples of him because of this miracle. So that is just so awesome, really awesome. And it's a really fast way to, to get people's attention <laughs> so that they'll be open to hear the gospel. Okay, let me turn my page, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so in Acts, there are 20 occasions when church growth is directly related to signs and wonders. Only once is church growth attributed to preaching alone. So I'm gonna repeat that because it's really big. This is like kind of um, one of the bullet points of this video is that when I went through the book of Acts, I counted that we see church growth directly related to signs and wonders 20 different times and we only see it one time with preaching alone the other 20 times involved a miracle or a sign or a wonder 
So that's a really big deal because a lot of times people in the Western world, Christians in the West, we want to just preach alone. But we see here that in the early church, when things were first starting out, it's our model. The early church is our model for Christianity, right? So when the Christianity was just starting out, it was typically, overwhelmingly, really, it was they would do a sign and a wonder and then preach. So that's our model for today. And then when we pair that with 1 Corinthians 4.20 that I just read that says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power, we see that that is still that is tr true again because we see it all through the book of Acts and we have lots of scriptures to back it up, 1 Corinthians 4.20 being one of them. So my um, encouragement is just to, for everyone to realize this. And if you still don't believe me, you can definitely study it out more. I'm just going to cover these couple today, um, I believe. And I'll just make another video. I don't want these to be too long or anything, but I'll just sum it up. And, and this is what I have written here. It says, it seems clear from this survey of the book of Acts so far, we've only gotten a couple in, right? But that signs and wonders played a vital and integral part in the spread of the gospel. Has this stopped being the case? Surely not. The Holy Spirit still seeks to become involved in a similar way in churches today, as he sought to be down through the centuries, so that the spread of the gospel might be accelerated. Okay, so there's a lot of talk about this, you know, us being really pretty far into the end times. And so we want to accelerate things, right? We want to bring revival. And so this is a good way to do that. So I'm going to stop the video for here, and we will continue this. Um, I hope you guys like this series. So I might do another video on the book of Acts, but also I'm going to take you down through the ages of different healing examples, and I think you guys are really going to like it. So I hope you have a wonderful night and be blessed in the name of Jesus. I will see you guys another time. Bye.